Hello friends, continuing our lecture on early development in vertebrates, uh, we have already discussed uh, about fishes, right? When we are going to discuss about vertebrates, we will be discussing mainly about fishes, right? Next, birds and last is mammals. And we have already discussed about fishes, we have discussed about the cleavage, gastrulation and axis formation in fishes. Now we'll be starting with the development happening in birds and exclusively we'll be talking about chick, right? Fine. Now, uh, uh, let's, whenever we are going to discuss about, uh, you know, uh, development, right? We'll be always discussing the development process under three heads. First is going to be the cleavage, right? Second important thing is going to be the gastrulation, fine. And third important thing is going to be the axis formation, fine. Now, here we'll be starting with the cleavage first. Now, let's start with the cleavage. We'll be talking about cleavage and gastrulation in this particular lecture, right? Now, when I start with the cleavage pattern, the first important thing is that uh, cleavage completely and entirely depends on the distribution of yolk present in the egg. And if I talk about the egg pattern of birds, it is telolysithal, right? Telolysithal means the yolk is concentrated at one point, right? You have a yolky thing at one point, um, very little yolk and um, the rest is non yolky cytoplasm. Okay. Apart from that, based on this pattern of egg, if I talk about the cleavage happening here, you have discoidal meloblastic cleavage, same kind which is happening, which was happening in, in fact in fishes also. So next is you have discoidal meloblastic, right? It's a discoidal meloblastic cleavage. Fine. Now, after this discoidal, the this, this is about the type of egg, okay, and this is about the type of cleavage. Now, in the type of cleavage, let's study a bit detail that what are the respective planes of cleavages, right? Now, when I talk about the planes of cleavages, it is vertical and equatorial cleavages happening repeatedly. And because of those repeated cleavages happening at the, there's a, there's, you know, the cleavage doesn't happen at the yolk. Fine, the cleavage happen at the non yolky part. So there, it's like the same in fishes. In fishes, what was happening? The cleavage was, have, you know, concentrated in a small disc of non yolky cytoplasm, that which was called as blastodisc. And there was repeated cleavage happening, and because of that, you have a blastoderm formation, fine. And that blastoderm, beneath that blastoderm, you could see a very large yolky cell. So something, some, I mean, a bit same thing is seen here also. You have blastodisc, and cleavage is, you know, directed to that blastodisc region only. And because of that, that blastodisc region is undergoing repeated divisions. And because of those repeated divisions, you get five to six cell uh, layers thick thing. Okay. So you have repeated divisions happening. Right. And because of those repeated divisions, you get something like this five to six. So this is like the first, the second the third, right, the fourth, and the fifth. Something like this, fine. So this is a five to six. This is five to six cell thick layer. And this five to six cell thick layer is basically, you know, distributing, um, themselves okay according to this distribution is according to the you know 
I should say uh, it, this distribution is according to secretion of certain substances. Okay. Now what happens when I talk about these layers? What is going to happen? You have something called as egg white, right? You have something called as egg white. What it is called as? If I talk about the egg white, what it is called? It is called as albumin, right? Now what do you see? This Albumin has got specific chemical and that chemical that chemical gets secreted and because of that uh, uh, secretion of chemical you have a cavity called as subgerminal cavity which is there between this blastoderm and the yolk beneath it. How the thing should be? Let's just concentrate how the thing should be. Suppose let me just represent this entire area with this green color. This is representing nothing but maybe this is, see this is a, just a vague diagram, okay. We'll be seeing the exact diagram when we'll be talking about the gastrulation, okay. And in fact in the further, in further lectures also we'll be seeing the exact di diagram. So this is what, this is the blastoderm. This is the blastoderm. Now what is going to happen? You have um, egg white or albumin, okay. You have a distribution of egg white or albumin. And that egg white albumin is secreting what? And suppose, let's just assume this is the yolky thing. Like this, okay? This is what? This is the yolky cytoplasm. This is the yolky cyto. Let me write it like this. Now, what is going to happen? There is secretion of some chemical, okay? And that chemical is secreted from the egg white albumin. And how the thing is changing? How the thing is changing? This is the blastoderm, right guys? Okay, and this is the yolky layer. This is the yolky layer, right? And in between, you have a cavity which is called as subgerminal cavity, fine? So because of this, you see formation of a cavity which is called as Sub germinal cavity, right? And when I talk about this subgerminal cavity, this is between the blastoderm and the yolk. So I'll just put it here. This is between blastoderm, right? And this is how you get the subgerminal cavity, right? Now, apart from that, you have some deep cells in the middle of this blastodermal region, right? Some deep cells in the middle of the blastodermal region. And these deep cells in future, uh, at this stage, when the subgerminal cavity is being created, these deep cells are going to slot off, they're going to shed off. And when there is shedding of these deep cells happening, then that... This entire area is called as, this is, these are the deep cells, okay. So these deep cells, you have deep cells like this. And these deep cells are going to get shed up and slot off. Now when this shedding and slotting of these deep cells, you have formation of an area which is called as area pellucida, which is going to form the embryo, okay. So after, in cleavage, these all things are very important. First is just subgerminal cavity. Second is formation of what? area pellucida. Now when I talk of this about this area pellucida, how is this being formed? You have what? Shedding of deep cells. Okay. In the middle of in middle of blastoderm fine okay so this is formation of area pellucida and this is going to form what this is going to form your embryo this is going to contribute for embryo okay apart from that the next important thing which is being formed is called as area opaca okay now how is this area opaca is being formed Let's concentrate on that. Now this area opaca is when the marginal cells are shed off. 
Now, what is area opaca? You have the deep cells at the marginal. These are the middle. Uh, if I talk about area pellucida, these cells were basically the middle cells, the deep cells of the middle area. Now, the deep cells of the periphery of the blastoderm, which is not going to shed, will be your area. Will is going to form your area opaca. So, what you are going to see? What you are going to see? The Peripheral, right? The peripheral blastodermal cells, right? Which are not going to shed. Not going to shed. And if I talk about the region where you are, where there is an interface of your area pellucida and area opaca, that forms a zone which is called as marginal zone. That is called as marginal zone. So if I talk about this marginal zone, this represents the interface. Okay, it's an interface between area pellucida, right? And area open fine so this is about the cleavage now let's start talk about the gastrulation let's talk about the gastrulation and when we'll be talking about gastrulation we need to actually see the formation of this area pellucida area opaca and splitting of Layers called as epiblast and hypoblast. You, we have already discussed a bit about epiblast and hypoblast when we were talking about the you know, gastrulation happening in fishes, right? We have talked about a very important thing which is called as embryonic shield, a germ ring which is further going to form embryonic shield, right? And we have seen that how if we just study that germ ring kind of thing, we are going to see an area which has got hypoblast, epiblast. How the hypoblast is going to form. Same thing we are going to see here in gas relation also. But let's just try to see in the form of diagram. Okay guys. So let's just see the diagram now. <laughs> 